Alina, Jose, Natalia, Russell, and Cynthia, Pelonomi Cynthia, and Odma. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Group One. Uh, we will share what we have done yesterday and day after yesterday, day before yesterday. Okay, this is the Group One member, me and Alina and Jose and Natalia and Russell and Pelo. Okay. First part of the activity, so it is the temperature field in a fuel fin in our oh, SFR and LFR. So we use this formula. I think everybody know what is what's the meaning of this. Each member of the formula. So this is the uh, specifications for the breast of 300 LFR reactor parameters. At first, we need to find that what is the edge effective of the core. <coughs> to do is that, it we to need to find well, uh, the, uh, the formula for edge effective. And uh, since we have. Excuse me, Vladimir. <laughs> We cannot see the screen. Can you please share the screen also? So do we need to? Okay now. Yeah, right now it's good. We can see. Do I start from it's beginning? Okay. Thank you so much. It's not work. It's, it's not work. It's not work. The flash is not. Uh, it's not work. Oh, yes. And then uh, at first we need to find H effective of the core, and then we have. Uh, the average linear power formula like this, and also we have this formula, and then uh, by obtaining this integration, we can obtain this final equation for uh, average linear power, and by equaling these two, we can obtain this one equation, and then we can split this equation into two by making uh, this kind of graph. Uh, in this slide, I just showing what is how to, uh, how to do the integration. And then um, by using these two functions, we can obtain these two kind of the uh, curve. And then in this uh, matching point is uh, H effective. This is the f uh, effective uh, height of the active, uh, not active core, effective height of the core for LFR. OK. Then by using that height, we can obtain this actual uh, power lin uh, linear power distribution in, in, in LFR field spin. This is, looks like this. And what is the maximum and what is the average one is uh, shown in here uh, as a megawatt per meter. And then um, uh, the next one is we, need, we want to obtain the axial linear power distribution across the most powerful subassembly. Uh, uh, Vladimir gives us this kind of the formula, but there was some mistakes, then we uh, corrected, and then finally we can. <laughs> And then uh, we've, uh, we obtained this, the, uh, uh, it's not working here. Uh, we obtained this final formula for coolant temperature, axial for, uh, temperature profile like this. And then by using this formula, uh, uh, we can obtain the other temperature profile in a cladding outlet, in cladding inlet, in fuel outlet, in uh, fuel center line. So these formulas are obtained from the Todrius uh, textbook. Then by using that formula, we need to assume uh, uh, there should be a small gap, uh, even though he didn't ask any information on the gap. If you don't uh, assume uh, there, is there is a gap, 
uh, the all temperature was temperature for fire was overlapped with the uh, cladding in the temperature for fire. So that's why we assume like that there are 0 0.1 millimeter gap between fuel and cladding. And for that cladding, uh, I, uh, we use the therm same thermal conductivity, which is given by the Mr. Chirayu. And then uh, we obtain this actual temperature for fire for LFR fuel cell. So you can see the maximum. Uh, fuel temperature is less than 11.90 Kelvin. And for the SFR reactor fuel fin, we also uh, we um, use the same procedure, which I explained for the LFR, and these are the, uh, all the uh, specifications, which is uh, given by the Chirayu for us. And at first, we need to find the total mass flow of the rea reactor. Uh, this calculation is mainly, I mean, the, um, especially by uh, Mr. Uh, no, Miss uh, Natalia. Thank you. It's just formula. And next one is we need to find actual and radial picking factors. So it's also obtained like this, since we have what is the maximum, I mean, the total power, what is the number of the fuel assembly, and what is the uh, number of the fuel rods for uh, sub-assembly, and by using that, we can obtain these two. It's easy. And uh, to find the effective height of the core is uh, it's exactly the same procedure, which is already discussed. And then for this case, H effective of SFR is 1.33, 36. Then, using that effective height, we can also get this uh, axial power distribution. Or, and also, uh, axial temperature for file four in each domain. And the maximum one is less than 2,070 Kelvin. Okay, next, Pelo will explain. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so on activity number two, we were given uh, uh, a module three to, to discuss, and so we had to do the learning objectives. And so the learning objectives of this uh, module three, we decided that it's to describe the needs for technological and institutional uh, innovation to improve the nuclear energy systems with the goal to achieve a sustainable development and deployment. And uh, another objective is to provide knowledge and practical skills about nuclear energy as part of environment to, of sustainable development with planning and modeling scenarios. And also to train nuclear personnel, the masters and doctoral students, professors, technicians in the workplace to adequately present to the public and policy makers innovations in the nuclear sector that contributes to the deployment of a sustainable world. And on the module three we were given, uh, we were asked to do the main topics, the subtopics and the learning object, the outcomes. So the module three of innovations in nuclear energy sector in meeting sustainable energy development uh, challenges. Uh, so we decided that it, uh, the, uh, on topic one, it, which is the main topic, will be nuclear and renewables for carbon and neural future. And the subtopics are for a life, cy life cycle assessment when comparing sustainable energy technologies, uh, sustainable development goals, and this is to achieve green, green hydrogen production to reduce a carbon footprint in the future. And topic two is environmental and developmental impact. This is a reviving growth and imaging environment and economic <coughs> indecision making. So in summary is that a development that is conserving and enhancing the resource base to sustain a large number of people in, in living in poverty. And for the economic growth, we are to meet a basic human needs and to integration challenges of nuclear power and safety and non proliferations uh, This is for economic and social development that can and should be mutually reinforcing. Uh, the money that will be spent on education and health will rise uh, human productivity and the economic development can accelerate social development 
by providing opportunities for underprivileged groups, like for people living under poverty to improve their quality of life. And new nuclear technology, new, new technologies development in the nuclear uh, area, which is for a new classes of advanced reactors and fuel. And uh, the, the, the op outcome of uh, topic one will be a tracing sustainable energy path. And the other is to present sustainable development goals and to include a dedicated energy and to afford affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy for all. And the other one is to show how nuclear power can provide electricity accessible to growing urban population. This is to meet the basic human needs. And also, a nuclear power uh, must be used effectively for a for purpose, as I said, around in safeguards. Uh, measures including uh, Tichut IEA and, and areas to, I can <laughs> yes, so this is what we came up with. Oh, advanced nuclear technologies for the SMRs and the yeah. <laughs> and so the prerequisite for module three uh, a person must possess a uh, basic uh, knowledge of mathematics, physics, and nuclear power technologies, and engineering background, including a bachelor's degree in nuclear engineering, will be adventure, adventure, advantageous. And a person must successfully complete the core modules, core module one and core module two. Core module one, which is uh, energy, pl energy planning and strategy for sustainable development, and module two, which is planning for nuclear energy sustainability of the model curriculum or module or course with similar content. And the learning outcome is to explain the concept of innovations in nuclear energy sector in sustainable energy development challenges as deployed by the INPRO presented in the relevant IEA publications. Uh, relate the INPRO concept of sustainable energy system to meet the sustainable energy development for achieving sustainable development goals, the SDGs, uh, and to present sustainable developmental goals to the UN, which include a dedicated goal on energy to ensure access to affordable and reliable, uh, sustainable and modern energy for all and also to meeting basic essential needs in part and achieving full growth potential and sustainable development to require economic growth in places where such needs are being met. And thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Group one, now I'd like to ask Professor Kasilov who joined us to first him to make his comment and then I will ask Chirai Batra to, to make his comment on the first part. Andrei, are you? Can you hear us? I hear, I'm here, yes. Good morning, everybody. First, uh, about activity number two, which was presented right now. I think it's uh, good enough, but uh, from my point of view, the group uh, put too, uh, too many attention to the general questions regarding the impact of the nuclear uh, energy uh, on the general issue of the electricity production and whatever. The, and also it's quite clear from the uh, objective uh, learning uh, outcomes that they, uh, if you can show the, this one, yeah, no, no, this is okay. Okay, I can comment here. Uh, just put the um, uh, the proposition, uh, uh, flight with the proposition of the topics, the uh, chat uh, uh, layout. Next one, please. Can you show next slide? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. That before, before, one, one more. Okay, this one. You see, oh, this one. There, 
Uh, here, if you will go the innovations in nuclear technology, just model three. If you go to the next level, this is the main topics and economic growth, environmental and development impact, and nuclear and renewable for carbon uh, neutral future. Uh, this mainly associated with uh, general approach in the nuclear energy systems. That what I really expect, that you will put more attention to the new technologies, development in nuclear area. And this was uh, minimum your attention, you just new cases. But what advanced uh, reactors uh, here? Maybe in other techniques uh, could be also, and how they will influence. Generally, I understand your approach. It's uh, very good, but again, if you uh, refer to model one and model two, that uh, the first uh, three main topics mainly addressed in model two. It means that from this point of view, it's kind of uh, repetition, repetition, and uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, giving me the feeling that you're trying to. Uh, it will assess the whole system and to see how the nuclear will help in the uh, mankind needs for energy and whatever. Then this is my comments that I expect a little bit more on new technology development in nuclear area and more specifically uh, analysis of how different technologies can, uh, I think, Okay. Uh, help Thank in meeting challenges uh, for development of uh, nuclear energy sector in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kasilov. I am happy that you found some understanding, reached some understanding on how to proceed. Okay, now, Chirayu, do you have any comments? Yeah, <clears throat> just a couple of comments. Your answers are not matching mine. So uh, maybe mine are wrong, but who knows? Let's see what other groups present. Because for me, at least, the H effective is coming out to be one. And for uh, you, it was, I think, like one three or something. So two. you shouldn't Can tell you? now, because we have another group also. But for, for the I mean, LFR, now, it's, a, it's OK, nearly. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I mean, at least for the other groups also, they will not change the calculations now. So it's too late to change the calculations. So I just want to see what others are calculating, but for you, my answers are not matching. And can you quickly tell me what was the mass flow? Maybe the problem comes from there. But H effective doesn't depend on mass, at all, but okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I think this is also different for me if I'm just quickly going to check mine. If you give me a second. But this is not a major difference. This might be just some rounding error. So this is more or less OK. Uh, but yeah, this is also OK. But something is wrong with the edge effective. Or mine is wrong. We'll see. So but this is OK. KZ, this is, same as KZ is OK, but H, and H effective is not OK. That was OK. OK, okay. any Can other comments? KZ is 1.37. Yeah, KZ is OK for me as well. Yeah, but H effective somehow is, is not matching mine. So we'll see what others have. And I think that will also impact the other results probably after mm -hmm. that, because you need H effective for the future calculations. Uh, okay. So that's why my the graphs are also different for me. OK, that's it. Otherwise, the logic is is fine. I mean, here is this perfectly, yeah. perfectly explained it, even found in this mistakes errors in, in the presentation. I didn't put it on, on purpose. It was, I don't know, from equation editor or something. OK, then, thank you very much, group one. Great job. Great job. Now I, I'd like to invite group number two to present their results. Ashwita, Adriana, Roman, Ivan, Ekaterina, and 
Umemadbua. Do you hear me? Oh, yeah. So, first of all, uh, our team want to say that we are so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to be there and to present this presentation and to be a part of this uh, brilliant event. Of all, uh, thank you for all the organizers and, of course, for all the lecturers online and offline for this impressive, attractful presentation. So, uh, our team was named Bibi Moo. Uh, from the uh, first uh, letters of the uh, list of our countries uh, and um, uh, uh, what was our our view of our presentation so brief the main objecti objectives of the group activity uh, thermohydraulic calculations of the reactors uh, the calculation results comparison we decided to do a little bit more and to finish additional task also. Uh, and uh, activity number two, map of the model topics and conclusions, of course. So uh, the main objectives uh, to understand the basic thermal hydraulic characteristics of the sodium and lead cold fast reactors, to calculate the power profile, temperature profile, to understand the reactor behavior, to compare obtained calculation results to describe the needs for technological and institutional innovations and improvements in nuclear energy systems with the goal to achieve sustainable development and deployment. Uh, so uh, I ask my colleague to... Okay, thank you, Roman. Uh, so this part will be, we'll start with the sodium fast reactor, the Phoenix, I'll present this. And then Nabila will present the, the lead fast reactor part. Okay, so these are the input data that we received for the Phoenix reactor. Uh, so we start with the first question that is the total mass flow of the reactor. So we went for a approach of uh, delta T that we, we had as a, an input of 160 Kelvin. So we started with uh, dividing by the total core power by the CP and the delta T. So we, we reached um, 2,775 kilograms per second. And the question two is regarding the axial and radial peaking factors. So as we have the, the maximum power for the, the hottest fuel assembly, uh, we can compare it to the, average, to the average power of each fuel assembly, dividing the total core power by the number of fuel assemblies. So the, this, re, uh, this ratio between those two, we can uh, find the, the, the K radio which is 1.17, 1.18, and the KZ is just uh, 1.62 divided by the KR. So the defective height of the active core, we went from uh, having to integrate the Q linear, the, yeah, the, the Q prime function. So to find the Q, Q prime, we had to find Q prime max that was given by uh, taking the, the, the max power fuel assembly, multiplying by the KZ, so we have the K prime max. And uh, integrating, we, uh, and using an iterative process, we found that the H effective is 0 0.99988, so we assumed one meter for the H effective value. And with the H effective value and the Q prime max, we can plot the Q prime of Z function along the axial position. So this is our, our plot for the question number four. Uh, question number five is regarding the, the temperature distribution profile across the most powerful subassembly. 
So we used the um, this uh, this formula, which relates the the bulk temperature as a function of z, and as inputs we have a temperature inlet, the q prime q prime naught, which is q prime max for the the, f the fuel assembly. And here we have this distribution. And just to compare with the average fuel assembly, uh, we did reach the 160 Kelvin as a comparison, so just to check if our model for this part was correct. And as expected, the, the hottest fuel assembly has a higher delta T. And following for the the bulk, uh, j just plotting uh, the clad the clad temperatures uh, and the bulk temperatures to have a comparison, visual comparison, we used uh, uh, this, uh, this equation which considers the convective heat transfer coefficient, which we can obtain from the Nusselt number and the Nusselt number from the Peclet number, uh, which is basically dependent on the flow velocity and geometry. So we consider a triangular array for the, the equivalent diameter. We found the, the velocity, the average velocity in that subchannel. And then we found the Beclay, Nosot, and H. So we could also plot a temperature for clad outlet, tem clad outer temperature, and the clad inner temperature. Um, oh yeah, okay. So this is for clad outer temperature. Uh, and in this, I'm sorry. Oh yes, I'm sorry. And uh, for the clad inner temperature, we used a a conduction, yes, yeah, linear conduction model to find the, the temperature in the clad inner. Clad inner. Uh, and this is the results for the temperature in the fuel, yes, which we have here the, the clad inner. Uh, <laughs> should be in the, the other slide, yes. Uh, and for the maximum temperature inside the center line of the fuel, we, we use this formula, which we, they were all taken from the Todreas uh, textbook. And it's interesting to notice that uh, the fuel temperature, the fuel maximum temperature is only dependent on the, the Q prime and not on the radius. Yes. So this is a, a all, the, all the temperatures fields that, that we found. You see there's a, a big gap between uh, the, te the fuel outer our temperature in the clad inner, mostly because of the of the insulating properties of the gap. Um, we checked if it's everything was okay, but I mean, it's possibly the the input data. And this is the optional part of the exercise, which asked us to set the the flow velocity to nine meters per second and uh, increase the thermal power of the core. So first, we set the the velocity at nine meters per second, keeping the same core core power, then increasing to 600 megawatts, 650, and 700. And in 700, oh, this is offset. I'm sorry. This should be right uh, in 2,923 Kelvin, yes, as a limit for 2,700 Celsius for for the limit, and this is offset. I'm sorry. Uh, and yes, and at and as we, we we calculated for 700 megawatts, we saw that it was it was passing that limit. So we did a an interpolation to find the temperature that would uh, be at the limit of the the failure mode of the of the fuel. So we found that to be around 690 megawatts. And this is the the best reactor that Nabil will carry on. Thank you. Thank you. So we use the same thermal hydraulic principle for this one also. So the first uh, objective was like we are given exercise input data and we had to find out the effective height of the active core, axis linear power distribution across the most powerful assembly. That's the objective for the last one, the quite similar one, I'll just go to the next slide. So the uh, effective height of the active core, we um, did the same process, we calculate the maximum pin, um, maximum uh, power in the hot pin, then we used it in this integration formula and we used the iterative process and we got H effective is equal to 1.5 to 75 meter. Next, we calculate the axial linear power distribution across the most powerful assembly. So 
we used the uh, axial position against the uh, heat temperature, so we got the cosine fu function. Next, uh, we did the bulk temperature of the coolant, and uh, for this, we use this formula uh, using the inlet coolant temperature, and uh, with axial position, you can uh, see the from inlet to outlet the temperature difference. And next, we uh, found out the clad outside that came uh, from this formula, and you use the heat convection coefficient that uh, we found out uh, from the same process. I mean, uh, the flow velocity to packlet to nozzle to convection coefficient, then we used it and uh, with the linear heat generation. And uh, from this formula, we can see but the legend and shown uh, can be seen there. I mean, we showed the difference between the clad outer temperature to clad inside temperature with the bulk temperature in this figure. But unfortunately, this is okay. So in this slide, we calculated uh, the uh, fuel center line temperature and uh, fuel pellet outer uh, temperature. So the yellow one is the fuel pellet outer temperature. And uh, there's no gap in this um, problem set. So we uh, calculated um, these two, uh, the fuel pellet outside and the central line temperature. So uh, the blue one, the central line temperature is the higher from the clad outside. And we used that T max minus T F not formula for this. Okay, next we presented all these um, at the same slide. <laughs> Unfortunately, the laser cannot be seen, but the uh, lowest uh, one is the bulk temperature, the blue one, and then uh, higher than that, the clad outside, that clad inside, and ultimately we get the maximum center line temperature, the light blue one, upper one. The next problem was to check our uh, temperature profile with uh, flow velocity. So we used uh, different um, velocity that's we actually found 0.8 meter per second for the given input data set. So we just increased 0.8 to 1.5 meter per second, then, sorry, 1.25, then 1.5 meter per second, 1.75, and two meter per second, the highest for a two meter per second. As we can see that as the flow velocity has increased, the temperature of uh, every I'm clad in bulk and full center line has decreased because a larger flow velocity, more heat transfer, and the heat uh, temperature has uh, decreased with uh, velocity. So there's like a comparison between uh, Phoenix and the Briest uh, um, late cooled reactor. And we uh, had the input data for uh, both of them. The total thermal power for Phoenix was 563 megawatt and Briest was 700 megawatt. And Actified were, uh, for Phoenix, it was uh, 8.85 meter and effective height was one meter, and for Briest, the active height was 1.1, and the effective was 1.5 rounded. The bulk uh, delta T in the hottest fuel assembly, the temperature increase was, for Phoenix, it was 190 degree Kelvin, and for Briest, it was 263. As we can see, the Briest has like more thermal power, so we can, as we can understand why this is like larger bulk delta temperature in the hottest assembly. And next, the Q prime, the linear heat distribution in the hottest pin cell, that's for Phoenix, is uh, 32.73, and for Briest, it's 22.41 kilowatt per meter. As you can see, the uh, effective height and or the active height for Phoenix is smaller than the Briest, so it's understandable why the linear heat generation for Phoenix is more. And last, the highest full center line temperature for Phoenix, it was 2550 Kelvin, and for Briest is 132 Kelvin. Uh, the cooling properties of different coolant. So we found these uh, values, and the conclusion was, okay, there's like a thermal calculation where carried successfully, and we cross-checked uh, from different formulas, and we also tried to find out the uh, average bulk temperature to see if we have formulas for maximum bulk temperature is going well. So we cross-checked multiple times, and uh, for Phoenix, uh, maximum temperature do not pass the limiting condition for fuel or cladding, because uh, the limiting temperature condition was uh, 2700 degrees Celsius, but we found uh, much lower than that. And uh, to reach uh, Phoenix fuel temperature limit, it would have to be operated up to 
690 megawatt at 9 meter per second coolant velocity. That was the fixed coolant velocity, 9 meter per second, how much we can reach. So it was like 690 megawatt, we can safely operate the reactor. And next, uh, the differences in Briest 300 OD temperatures were lo lower than uh, Phoenix, as we said before. And the Briest presents significantly lower temperature during operation at a limit velocity of 2 meter per second. Was the higher the velocity, higher the heat temperature transfer, and lower the final temperature. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. The next up will, will be presented. So this is an exercise about this model, model tree as used in impro, impro material and I-N-P-R-O material as used as organized, this work as organized and by map of the model topics and which modulo three innovations in nuclear engineer and energy sector and meeting sustainable energy de development changes and topic is topic one motivation engine for reactor and innovation models SMER challenges assignment models so this motivation is energy security, energy mix that expressing the need for innovations in nuclear energy. So, the, uh, so the next, the second topic, second uh, main topic will be generation, uh, generation four reactors and the innovative models. Uh, in which the subtopics will be uh, different uh, reactor models, which are uh, BHRT, MS, uh, MSR, CS, uh, C, uh, uh, super cold uh, fast reactors, super critical uh, water cooled reactors, and uh, uh, gas cooled fast reactors, and lead cooled fast reactors. From which the learning outcome would be uh, uh, ex to explain the characteristics, advantages, challenges, and areas of opportunities of the proposed models. And the third topic, third main topic, which was uh, selected was uh, SMRs, uh, in which the subtopics will be uh, concepts, different designs of SMRs, uh, the hybrid systems, and uh, the applications, from which the learning outcomes would be uh, to demonstrate uh, the simplification by modularizing the nuclear systems. And the second outcome would be uh, to describe the possibilities and benefits of uh, hybridizing the SMRs with the other energy technologies. And the fourth uh, topic which we selected was uh, the challenges, uh, in which uh, the subtopics are uh, regulatory review and designs, financial challenges, and environmental challenges. Uh, the learning outcome uh, will be to develop the, an understanding of the possible opportunities for refining the growth of uh, nuclear energy. Uh, and the last uh, topic, uh, main topic was uh, assessment models in which uh, the um, subtopics will be heuristic techniques, LENDIT, PTGVL, S2R28. Uh, the learning outcome from this will be the, uh, to illustrate the uh, performance and uh, importance of various assessment models uh, to perform the exercises on uh, modeling and simulators of uh, uh, nuclear energy systems. So we came up with the main objective, which was uh, to uh, familiarize the students with an uh, innovative approaches to reach the goal of sustainability in nuclear energy systems uh, by understanding the models and to teach them the ways to put the knowledge in practice. And the pre prerequisites uh, for the course would be uh, uh, to, uh, they, may, they need a basic knowledge of maths and physics of uh, nuclear science design and analytic, analytical uh, engineering background. And the second prerequisite, which we forgot to mention here, was the knowledge of uh, like the completion of module one and module two. And uh, the conclusion of this exercise was uh, the educational system is very important to motivate the students to find innovative solutions for the current uh, nuclear systems. Uh, and the practical knowledge of Gen 4 reactors uh, would help the students to better, uh, build a better model uh, for the future of nuclear energy systems. So, 
uh, one final and the most important conclusion, it doesn't matter SMR or SFR or LFR, the safety is first. So this is our motto. We are BBM and we are researching for you. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, group two. Very good teamwork. Uh, again, I'd like to ask Professor Kasilov to, to comment on the presentation. Maybe we can show the slides again. Oh, it's fine. Uh, it's not necessary. I think generally I'm quite happy that the group understood uh, really the uh, way and requirements what was uh, suggested and it's quite good knowledge map and uh, topics uh, quite deep. The general question which I have, can group uh, make estimation if it will be a, a university course? What do you think? Uh, what should be the... Um, how many hours? What will be one semester, two semester? How many hours lecture semester or total hours will be allocated? Because you put, uh, I think, very holistic approach and uh, decided to uh, cover um, important and very different topics. What will be your uh, suggestions about the volume of this course? Who will be answering? But generally, I'm quite happy Sir? with what was done uh, with uh, this short time. Yeah, I didn't catch your question. Uh, uh, could you repeat? What will be the uh, okay. number of educational hours, no, we can say like this, uh, for to complete this course, to present this course, to teach this course? Uh, maybe uh, one, one 14 day, one to 15 hours week. will suffice. 14 huh? to 15. 15 hours may suffice a few. 15 hours? Yeah. 15 hours lectures? Yeah. Uh, I think not enough. Definitely not enough. Okay, that's... Sorry, generally, Sorry Andre, like, only one semester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But generally, I can say i quite happy what was reached for this uh, short period of time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And now I'd like to ask Chirayu, Mr. Chirayu Batra, to, to, to provide his comments. Yeah, again, brief comments. Your calculations are matching mine. So probably now it's like two groups matching. Uh, so two set of calculations are matching. But I also like how you compared it uh, with the breast. Yeah, this was very useful also, probably. Uh, I don't know what more insights I can think from this because the operating parameters are quite different. But it was also useful uh, to see the comparison between lead and men's sodium pool fast reactor. But overall, the calculations are matching my calculation. So, uh, but for the breast, no, does match. Maybe mine breast, wrong. Huh? Phoenix, know. it matches. Okay, that's, that's good try. Okay, thank you very much. Again, thank you very much, Group Two. Now we have a group three. Please. I made photo already, so it's okay. Group three. <laughs> ay, ay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, but thank you for saving our time. And actually, this, 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 I can tell you, this, that was not a competition. That was a teamwork. And these first two groups really demonstrated good teamwork, which I had doubts because of these also conditions, not very perfect to study maybe. Okay, it's better than, than August when you guys all will be swimming outside, but weather, weather helped a lot to, to, to complete at least for two groups. And also that was not competition. We will not decide the winner because uh, Nicola ICTP doesn't provide money for, for, the, for, the, for the awards. Yeah? <laughs> that was, you know, non non financial competition. Okay, that this is voluntary non financial competition. Okay, now we have. We can actually start already. District. Do we have certificates, Nicola? Because we just.
And before we go for this, I, I would like to ask uh, our online. Now we have Prof. 